Hello. Should be live, I think, now. Good morning, everyone. Happy Good Friday. All right. So I'll just give it a few minutes. Get some people logged in. Should be. Hopefully you can see my face and hear me. Thanks for joining. We're going to be talking about turtles today. Obviously a very loved topic by myself and many others because turtles are great. Hello, Sue. Thanks for joining. So maybe you can let me know if you can hear and see me all right. Awesome, great. So I'll get started. I am supposed to be able to share my screen, so hopefully this works. Just one second. I might have to figure something out. Stand by. Yes, Susan, you can see the document or technology these days. It's not showing up on my screen. So hopefully this will work maybe. Backup plan. Not the best visual, but hopefully you guys can see that a bit better than nothing at all. All right, so I'll get started. So thanks for tuning in and being patient with me. Um, if you have any troubles hearing or seeing the presentation, please let me know. I want to make this the best experience as possible, but technology has limited me. Um, so yes, thanks for tuning in to Learn with Ranger M Live. We're gonna talk about turtles today. And not only is April Earth Month, uh, but right now with the warmer weather until about last night, it seems, with all the snow, uh, turtles are gonna start um, moving out and about. So I thought it would be a good time to talk about them. So I'm not quite sure if you can see that too well, but We'll try. This is our outline for today. I do want to quickly note that I am nowhere near a specialist in turtles, uh, but I have worked and assisted with a research project and a species at risk program for some turtle species. So I just want to share the knowledge I've gained through those experiences and advocate for the turtles and the conservation efforts uh, in place for them. I also do just love turtles and talking about them. So uh, at any point, if you do have any questions, please post to them and I will get to them near the end of the presentation. So in Ontario, we have eight turtles native in the wild, uh, with two of them the most uh, commonly known is snapping and painted turtles. There's actually two subspecies of painted turtles found in Ontario. 
Uh, that's the Midland, which is the one we see around here, and the Western turtle, which is more commonly found in the nor northwestern part of Ontario. So we don't really see it around here. And if you were to be in spring water, the snapping or the Midland painted would be the ones you would spot uh, most often. This is the snapper, a little dinosaur right there. He's quite a big guy. <clears throat> And this is a painted, you'd often see them basking out on fallen logs and stuff like that. Uh, these are all eight of the turtles. We'll dive into a bit of them as we go along. Uh, but I will just mention in this area, you can see the northern. Oh, wow. What a great circle that was. Anyways, the northern map turtle. The Blandings turtle you can also find around here, and then the Spiny Softshell, which is the second largest uh, freshwater turtle in Ontario, next to the Snapper. <clears throat> All right, a day in the life of a turtle. We're gonna look at the life cycle of turtles, uh, but we have to start, um, they are part of the reptile family, and in the order, uh, Testudines, which is characterized by a special bony or um, cartilaginous shell that is developed uh, from their ribs and acts as a shell. So that's the very common back that turtles have. Um, to break that down, um, this order is characterized by basically a shell, but not all turtles have that hard bony shell. Um, the spiny soft shell turtle actually has a very soft shell, which obviously is where it gets its name. And so that's why it says both bony and cartilaginous. And then a lot of people don't realize that a turtle shell is part of the, like basically their skeletal structure. So it's developed from their ribs. It is part of their back and it's not a separate part of the turtle. So these turtles can't leave their shell like uh, good old Franklin could. So that's a good point to make. Fun fact, some members of this order has been dated back to the middle of the Jurassic period, making turtles one of the oldest recorded reptile groups. And that means they're older than snakes and crocodiles, which not a lot of people know about. Also, there's evidence that suggests turtles can live between 150 and 400 years old, which is crazy. Uh, however, over uh, recent years, their average has decreased dramatically, and I think probably the average is about around 70 years old now, probably even lower. To go back to the life cycle, turtles' life cycles uh, begins like any other reptile in an egg. You can see right there. Female turtles reach sexual maturity uh, pretty late in their life, actually. It takes them between uh, 10 to 20 years to reach sexual maturity. The amount of eggs that a female uh, could have, the amount of eggs refers uh, to a clutch. Um, it can depend on the species of turtles, but can be anywhere between two and th just two and three in smaller turtles like um, the musk or the spotted to about 40 or 60 in the bigger turtles like snapping and the spiny softshell. Also the shape of the eggs differ. Uh, most are oval or like chicken egg shape that we see. Um, but actually the spiny and soft shell eggs are shaped like ping pong balls, which you can see in this picture right here. Females start laying their eggs anywhere from early May to late July. It really just depends on the warming temperatures in the spring. So you probably thought last week uh, things could get really moving for turtles, but then last night happened and there's snow on the ground. So who knows? The females start laying their eggs. Um, they scout out for well-drained, uh, warm and dry soil or even sand and gravel for their nests. Um, you can see in this far picture right here, this is what this female turtle is doing. She is, uh, she's dug her hole. She actually um, kind of scoops the dirt out using her nails and then um, she'll lay her eggs in that hole and then scoop the dirt back over top. And um, that's where the turtles the, or the egg, sorry, are incubated. Um, and the incubation period really ranges between turtle species, but, and it also depends on the temperature. Obviously the warmer it's out, the quicker the turtles will hatch, um, but could be anywhere from 
um, maybe like a month and a half to well over um, three or four months. And it actually has been shown that uh, painted turtles, um, if they kind of miss the uh, hatching period in the fall, they can stay in their eggs and incubate and then will hatch in the spring. Some turtle species are temperature dependent uh, for the sex of the turtles. Um, so that means pretending, or depending on uh, warmer temperatures or cooler temperatures, there could be more males or more females hatched, which is really cool. Um, you can kind of see in this picture right here that the eggs are not as uh, hard as chicken eggs. They don't um, crack as easily. They're very soft and leathery. Um, and the hatchlings, you can barely see it, probably not see it right now because of the bad quality. I will post this presentation on our website so you guys can check back um, and look through the presentation and the pictures, so hopefully a bit better quality. Sorry again about this. But you can see in this baby turtle that it has um, an egg tooth. And that's what they use to actually uh, get out of the egg. And then once they get out of the egg, they dig up the dirt and move towards water, which is one of the dangerous, most dangerous parts of their life cycle they have to go through, obviously, when they make their way out of the dirt and head to the water. Okay. So we're going to talk about uh, food and where the turtles like to live. So where turtles spend the majority of their time does range also again between species, but Ontario's are all mostly aquatic. Species like the snapping and musk turtles actually spend so much time in brack brackish, highly vegetated water that they actually start to grow algae and aqu other aquatic vegetation on their shells. Which unfortunately I don't have a picture of here, but it actually is very common for them to have. Makes them look even more snapping turtles, particularly more monster-like. <laughs> Um, turtles do travel uh, great distances sometimes to lay their eggs. I didn't mention this in this um, slide before, but they can travel great distances to lay their eggs. Um, I think the farthest they'll travel is about eight kilometers, which for a turtle I would assume is a pretty great distance. Um, but the spiny softshell actually loves the water so much, they will just basically like hop out of the water, find a nice gravelly sandy shoreline and lay their eggs right there. Um, but that's another uh, part of the spiny soft shell. It has a very that soft leathery shell and it helps them kind of, it's uh, tan color so it helps them blend in with the sandy bottoms um, that they can hide from predators or actually uh, use as kind of camo uh, to attack their prey. And they actually have, I don't know if I go back, you can kind of see their weird nose. They actually just stick that above uh, the water and keep their bodies below the water. So they kind of just stay in the water all the time. So all of Ontario's turtles, minus the Western Painted Turtle, are all found in Southern Ontario or um, what we consider like the Carolinian life zone. And they all depend on having access to a body of water as a source of food for them. They also need, obviously, basking areas, as we can see here. Um, they love to bask. They depend on basking for their temperature, their temperatures. Um, they do it on fallen logs. Uh, even when uh, bodies of water, like spring water pond, likes to do in August, gets really vegetated and it's actually so dense that turtles bask on top of that vegetation. It, it'll let them float on top or even rocks. It all works for the turtles. Wood turtles uh, spend more time in wooded areas or in and along the shores of watercourses than any other Ontario turtle. So wooded areas are important for them. So you find them near more uh, wooded areas where a lot of other turtles, that doesn't really matter for them as long as they kind of have a water course or a wetland. And turtles eat just about anything. They are not very picky at all. Uh, they are omnivores. They'll eat plant, animal, insect. Even um, some turtles eat mollusks or crayfish. 
and they're actually really good for water courses. So snapping turtles are uh, probably the best for keeping a water course, a pond, even a pond in your property, very clean. Uh, they're known as the garbage men of the wetland because they'll eat literally anything, dead or alive, on the bottom of the water course, they'll eat it all. And actually, quite a few turtles have to be underwater to swallow. Fun fact for you. Uh, wood turtles, uh, which is this guy right here, has a very cool tactic um, for hunting worms. They actually stomp their little legs on the ground, which encourages worms to come out of their dwellings in the dirt. And then um, the wood turtle eats the worms. All right, my favorite topic. What does a turtle do in the winter time? Withstand the elements, migrate or hibernate? So turtles are ectothermic, um, commonly referred to as cold blooded as well, but cold blooded doesn't really have um, the right science behind the term and it doesn't really have a great rep, especially when you're considering um, snakes, people say they're cold blooded. It's, it's not a nice term. So we use ectothermic which is the right term. And it means that the internal temperature of the turtle varies depending on the environment they're in. So if a turtle was basking on a hot rock in the sun, the turtle would be the same temperature as that hot rock. If you stick a turtle in a fridge, the turtle will become the same temperature as that fridge. So environmental temperature is very important to turtles. Therefore, turtles wouldn't be able to survive our Canadian winters um, so we can X that first one off. They do not stand to the elements. Also, I think migration, a, a migrating turtle would be the funniest thing because they definitely cannot make it to and from Mexico in four months, let alone to Mexico in four months. So they also do not migrate. They are too, too slow, which leaves hibernation. Turtles definitely do hibernate, just like actually snakes do during the winter in Ontario. So no matter where a turtle is during the summertime, they all make their way to a wetland to hibernate for the winter. As they swim to the bottom of the water, the top of the water freezes, while the water below uh, the frozen layer stays just above freezing. And I have a picture that kind of shows this, the temperature, like average temperature during um, the major seasons. So that's kind of why when you're in water in the summertime, it's colder below, um, warmer on top. It's actually the opposite in the winter time. So the top freezes and then everything below stays below freezing. So it's above zero degrees. And um, the turtle makes its way to the bottom and normally resides on the bottom. And actually some dig into the mud and stick their upper half into that mud. But like me and you, uh, turtles do also have lungs. So they need to breathe oxygen to survive. And even though their metabolism has slowed in the winter because of the drop in temperature, uh, they don't need as much oxygen, but they still need do some, sorry, they still need some, especially as um, the oxygen that aquatic vegetation has built over the summertime gets depleted because all of the animals in, because there's other animals in the water during the winter are using up oxygen. Um, turtles aren't getting as much oxygen, so they do have to find oxygen. So the turtles are underwater, they're headed, possibly, in the mud, and there's a frozen layer of ice above them. So we have to ask, how do turtles breathe? Well, guys, this is where it gets interesting. When you sleep, you're not eating anything. So you don't have to go to the bathroom. And turtles also are not eating anything, nor do they have to go to the bathroom. So their head's in the mud, and another part of their body is sticking up. Yes, that's right their butt. So turtles can breathe through their butts. It's actually called cloacal respiration or AKA butt breathing. Now it obviously is a bit more sciencey than just taking oxygen in and out, uh, but it has to do with turtles metabolism slowing down in the colder weather. Therefore oxygen demands are lower and they can use some stored energy, but when they do, they do need more oxygen and they use it in the, uh, they use oxygen that's in water, so H2O, there is oxygen in water, uh, and they move that water along vascularized areas, meaning areas that have a lot of blood vessels, which turns out to be the butts for turtles. So, <clears throat> so 
Um, <clears throat> there is one other way turtles um, hibernate, and that is actually switching their metabolism to one that does not require oxygen. It is actually very dangerous and can be lethal to turtles as it builds up so much lactic acid in the turtle's body. So much so that when hibernation is done, the turtle is a giant cramped muscle, basically. You know, after you run, you can get a cramped muscle, similar to that. And they have to get into the sun to increase their internal temperature and increase, that increases their metabolism and gets rid of that lactic acid that's built up. At this point, uh, turtles are very vulnerable because they barely can move. They can move, but not very fast. Um, they don't have the reflexes they normally do. So predators, um, they're very susceptible to predators at that point in time. All right, I'm just gonna touch on uh, snapping turtle. Because once again, it's one of the more common turtles that we find in this area, particularly. And there's a lot of uh, misconception around um, snapping turtles. So snapping turtles are lar the largest turtle species in Ontario and the largest freshwater and terrestrial turtle in Canada, actually. It can weigh up to 16 kilograms, which is the same weight as an average three-year-old human. And they can also live uh, past 150 years old. They have a very unique shell, which um, kind of has a dinosaur-like appearance. Um, I try to show, um, this is the top part of it. The back here, that the spiky scutes it has, that's kind of dinosaur-like in my uh, opinion. And then I couldn't really get a picture I had of their tail, but they have little spikes along their tail. Uh, furthermore, they have a very small plastron, um, plastron, since that is the underside of their shell. So you can see here in this middle picture, um, like a normal turtle, they can uh, retreat into their shell. A snapping turtle can't. So you can see here, it would try to get in, but its fatty parts of its arms and uh, belly would still show. Um, so that makes tur snapping turtles very vulnerable to predators. And... Um, They've, but they've developed a method of defense, and it's not hard to guess from their name what it is. They can snap. So um, on land, that is actually their only defense, and that's why they do it. Uh, some people say snapping turtles can break a finger, excuse me, or tear skin off. Uh, that is extremely rare. Um, they do have a very sharp little... Uh, not really a beak, but kind of like a beak on their mouth. And that's the sharp part. Their snap is actually not as strong as uh, we, we think it is. Humans actually have a stronger bite force uh, when we bite with our molars, so our back teeth, than uh, snapping turtles have. So we shouldn't really be afraid of snappers, especially when we're in water. Uh, they swim away from danger or humans. They do not swim towards it. So you shouldn't really ever be scared of a snapping turtle while you're in the water. Um, another cool fact about snapping turtles, you can't really see it in any of these pictures, but snapping turtles actually have a really long neck. You can kind of see uh, this guy's rolls on his neck. Um, they have really long necks. They can actually reach almost halfway back to the back of their shell. And that's another really cool thing they've developed. Um, if you so predators know snapping turtles have little fatty parts showing, so they go for them to eat them. So they put them on their backs, and um, the snapping turtle flips its head out and around and flips itself back over, so it's um, back on its feet. We're going to move to uh, the wood turtle. Wood turtle is a very cool turtle. Uh, I did mention it before. It's the most terrestrial turtle in Ontario, and it's also that uh, turtle that does the little cool leg stomping thing to get the worms out. It is a medium-sized turtle, and you can see it has uh, pretty bright uh, legs and neck. They're kind of a yellowy-orange color. Uh, wood turtles are very important when considering conservation. The wood turtle is probably the most at-risk turtle species in Ontario. In the 1990s, there were hundreds of wood turtles in Ontario, and over the course of just a couple weeks, that number dropped to fewer than 50 individuals due to a mass poaching event. So wood turtles are extremely protected and extremely endangered. So this turtle is so protected, you actually can't find anywhere where the current populations are found in fear of the poaching or the pet trade. 
So uh, they're very at risk. Believe it or not, the wood turtle did not get its name from being a more terrestrial based turtle. It actually got its name from as the turtle ages, its shell, you can kind of see here, appears more and more wood-like. So it's kind of like the rings on um, a piece of wood or something like that. And even as the uh, wood turtle gets older and older, it will look more and more like a piece of wood. So the status of turtles in Ontario isn't very uh, great. Unfortunately, all of the Ontario turtles are at risk of extinction, some being more susceptible than others, but it's very unfortunate that they've all landed on this list, which makes it quite obvious we have to do more for our turtles. Um, I'll touch on what we can do a bit later, but to give you a little breakdown of the classifications here, which if you do remember, I did in the activity number two with Learn, to Rain, Learn with Ranger M, uh, species invasive or at risk. But basically, you'll see um, several of them are special concern, also known as vulnerable. Uh, it describes those species that may become threatened or endangered because they have threats facing their habitat or themselves. Uh, threatened, a species is called this if it lives in the wild in Ontario, is not endangered but is likely to become endangered if steps are not taken to stop the things that threaten it. And then unfortunately we have um, two endangered species, and then one federally. Um, but the spotted and, sorry, three, spotted, spiny, and wood, and then the blandings federally. Um, that's uh, basically a species is called this when it lives in the wild in Ontario, but is very close to becoming extinct or extirpated. Uh, we need to act now to help these. Um, before we lose them, maybe forever. So threats to turtles, unfortunately, are uh, far and wide, um, but we'll discuss a couple. Predation or predators uh, is a really big issue for turtle eggs. There's no protection from mom or dad after the female lays her eggs and she buries those eggs and she just leaves them. Uh, she doesn't even come back in the fall to help them get out. Uh, sea turtle eggs, uh, they're kind of all on their own. Uh, raccoons and skunks uh, both have great sense of smell and therefore can smell the eggs underneath the dirt. Or they even um, kind of watch uh, turtles lay their eggs. While female turtles lay eggs, they're kind of like in a trance. Uh, so they're also very susceptible at that point in time. Um, and that's why I think I have coyotes on there as well. And the next one, habitat destruction or loss, is a really big one. Uh, in this uh, region of Ontario, the Carolinian Life Zone, uh, we used to uh, have about, I think, 25% of our land uh, of wetlands. And now that is down to, I believe, like 3% or something. So we have lost a great chunk of our wetlands for development um, and human use. And that means a loss of necessary habitat for these turtles. And turtles are also very susceptible to shoreline development that can disrupt aquatic vegetation and their shaded or basking areas and can also pollute water, which can cause kind of a ripple effect. So um, polluted water really affects um, mollusk populations. And like I mentioned, uh, turtles eat mollusks, but the northern map, female turtles depend on um, mollusk populations. So that could greatly impact that population. Misperception uh, really is about snapping turtles. As I mentioned before, many humans purposely kill snapping turtles for a range of reasons, but um, include fear um, surrounding snapping turtles. Uh, uh, killing people, I have heard, but it doesn't happen, or breaking bones or stuff like that, um, to misinformation about them being a threat to game fish or waterfowl, uh, which is not a huge uh, concern because snapping turtles have tons of food along the bottom of waterways. Like I said, they'll eat anything. So it's, um, yeah, a really big misperception about uh, snapping turtles. And the big one right now, is road mortality. It's a huge risk to turtles. In southwestern Ontario, on average, you can't travel more than one kilometer without hitting a road. 
And as I mentioned earlier in the presentation, turtles can travel up to eight kilometers to lay their eggs, meaning there is eight possibilities a turtle could be hit by a car. So, and those are female turtles uh, who are carrying up to 60 eggs. So it's 60 turtles we could be losing uh, by one, um, by each car hit. Uh, plus, female turtles prefer that sandy, gravelly substance that we have along uh, the roads for laying. So, um, meaning we need to pay very close attention when driving and watching for our little slow moving friends. If it is safe to do so, uh, check with your parents. It is a great idea to help um, turtles cross the road. Um, first, though, you want to make sure you know which way the turtle is traveling. It may be heading away from the water to lay some eggs. And um, I, like I said, moving is sometimes hard for turtles. So walking all the way back across the road after you moved it to the other side, though helpful, wasn't very helpful because now he has to go all the way back. So make sure you're helping it go in the right direction. If it is a snapping turtle, especially a female ready to lay eggs, you might not want to pick it up yourself. So you could use a stick or even your car brush if you still have it in your car, stick it in the turtle's faces the face, sorry, and it'll snap onto it and you can just drag it across the road. Uh, if it is small enough turtle, just grasp it firmly by the back of the shell. And like, kind of like I have this picture right here. Uh, the only thing is you really wanna watch out for their nails. <laughs> Turtles do have very sharp nails. This uh, little infograph, uh, we shared it on our Facebook page and we do try to share um, when turtles are moving out and about as much as possible. And um, just to share with the community and remind them uh, when they're driving to watch out for these guys. So this picture right here uh, is actually on Conservation Line, which is just, bespi just beside Springwater Forest. And you can see it's literally basically on the road that we found a nest. What can we do to help our turtles? There's a lot we can do. Private landowners actually play a huge role in conservation of turtles. You could apply for a stewardship program that supports the protection and recovery of species at risks, risk and their habitat. Um, feel free to contact your local conservation authority, the Ministry of Natural Resources and Forestry, or even um, your local stewardship council. Um, normally they all help um, or have programs set up to either implement maybe a habitat or have further information for you on how to protect these species. And as I've mentioned, these guys depend on wetland habitat. So protect these wetlands and surrounding vegetations on your property or even in your local neighborhood. Um, another really big one is report any illegal activity. Keeping Ontario native turtles as pets is actually illegal. Um, they are not pets, they're wild animals. And the purchase or sale of our Ontario native tur turtles is illegal. Harming these turtles or their habitats in any way um, is illegal as well because they're protected under Species at Risk Act and sorry, Fish and Wildlife Act. So uh, really important to either educate those individuals, maybe they just don't know, or contact uh, the proper channels. Another one is volunteer with your local nature club, provincial park, conservation authority, or um, stewardship council to participate in surveys or work in projects that focus on the, um, plus it's always just fun to play with turtles. So volunteering is a really fun one. Report a sighting of a species at risk. If you just see one, um, report it. Uh, there are, um, there is the Ontario Reptiles and Amphibians Atlas app. Uh, that is a very cool one. I think it's run by Ontario Nature. And um, yeah, it's where you can kind of put in any reptile or amphibian you um, spot and it helps them keep uh, populations counts and also to see where they're being spotted. Um, also uh, very careful and aware while driving. Um, this is when turtles are very vulnerable. If a turtle is hit by a car it actually doesn't mean like it's dead. Turtle shells are like backs. They can be fixed. So um, contact your local 
Animal Rehab Facility or the Ontario Turtle Conservation Center. Uh, it's up north, but um, they do have a very cool um, system of drivers and volunteers that help get turtles up to them. And they have a huge hospital and can help out. Okay. So there are many resources out there and so much information about turtles. Uh, it's really nice to see uh, all of the people advocating for turtles right now. So the Toronto Zoo does a lot of amazing research and conservation projects surrounding turtles. Their adopt a pond program offers a lot of good, reliable information. You can also get some free resources from them to share with a club or a class. Um, I believe just kind of search Toronto Zoo adopt a pond and they'll have, I can also share these resources after this presentation. Websites, I mean. Um, the Ontario Turtle Conservation Center, as I mentioned, it's a hospital and an education program. And I think last year it admitted like a thousand turtles uh, into their hospital and health pra like practices. So uh, they take those turtles in that who have been hit on the road or people have found them. Um, and they help them get better and then they also a lot of the times these are female turtles so they have these eggs and I think they release like anywhere between a thousand to two thousand hatchlings each year so they're doing great things for the recovery of these uh, species and again they have they're a great resource on their website um, for information about turtles or um, you can also donate to them because they're a non-for-profit and they have a lot of uh, expenditure when they're trying to help these turtles out and once again you can also be um, a volunteer and help get turtles to the hospital. I think you can also visit their hospital when things get back to normal which would be pretty cool. You can visit the Ministry of Natural Resources and Forestry website to get the full background on all species at risk in Ontario which is really cool and you can also contact them for reporting and conservation inquiries. <clears throat> Conservation authorities, many conservation authorities participate in species at risk stewardship programs and habitat restoration projects on both public and private land. So they're good to contact for anything like that. Also CAs like Upper Thames have amazing recovery programs. The team at Upper is collecting turtle eggs for a range of species during the summer and releasing those turtles right into the waterways, which is greatly uh, helping the turtle survival rate. So props to Upper Thames. Another really good one, a uh, couple, sorry, is the World Wildlife Federation, Natural or Nature Conservancy of Canada, Ontario Nature, and Stewardship Councils. They all do um, great work and they have great resources or can even assist uh, with turtle questions and stuff like that. Um, that is uh, mostly what I have for the presentation. But before I close, I might as well show my one more time. Uh, I do want to note um, something uh, about here, like the MNR monitors the transportation, rearing, and release of any species um, scheduled in the Fish and Wildlife uh, Species at Risk Act. And so as um, one of these species, turtles are protected under that provincial act. If you're conducting activities that involve transportation, collecting, rearing or the release of these animals um, you must require and um, special permits and compile or follow their regulations and stuff like that so i just want to let you know um, the projects we've been doing and the where i've gotten these pictures they're all mine um, i worked with the individuals that had the proper training and permits and um, knew how to handle these animals safely and ethically. Um, these animals are classified at risk and have very specific life cycles, habitat and food needs. And I really just wanna drive home the message that they're not pets, nor should they be treated as such. Um, and I just wanted to let you guys all know that they're very special animals and they're very cool, um, but they are wild animals. So that concludes my official presentation. Um, but if anyone has any questions, of course, I'll stay and answer them. I shall see. Thanks, Tess. Those are some great resources. 
Hi, Becca. Slow for turtles and break for snakes. Save the turts. Yes, Mark. I can see a messy closet. I'm sorry. I am in a bedroom. Um, any questions? I don't think so. Well, this will be posted after, I believe a live video is posted on Facebook after, so you can um, always leave a question. I'll get to them whenever. And yes, fact of the presentation, of course. Everyone loves that fact. All right, guys, thanks for tuning in again. And I'll be doing um, a live Learn with Ranger M next Friday as well. So tune in. All right. And take care. Don't want to end. There we go.